This is the tech tip video for the solid axle on the X1222. The solid axle is now a standard part in both the EU and US editions of the kits for the reason that the X1221 and 22 have been developed around the use of a solid axle in the rear. It's become sort of the class standard now and it's rare that you'll have to use anything else than a solid axle. Um, even for low grip carpet you can get away with running a solid axle in the rear because of the low roll center and the uh, design of the X-ray uh, X1221 and 22 cars that really generate a lot of grip, even for low grip with a solid axle in the rear. So, since it's now the kit standard, we came up with a new design of the solid axle, which is a hollow steel design. So this has the benefit over the traditional graphite design that. It's got a lot less flex, so it's got almost no give. So when you apply the throttle, there's no flex in the axle, which can have a negative, negative effect on the, um, the handling of the car and uh, the throttle feel of the car. When you, when you apply the throttle, the car will accelerate uh, in a straight line without any excess flex or vibration. So it really improves the throttle feel of the car which is especially helpful in modified classes where you use a powerful motor compared to stock classes where we use uh, slower motors. Sometimes for stock classes it can be uh, still an advantage to use the old style of solid axle which is the graphite solid axle because of the reduced rotational weight and because of the slower motor you don't have as much uh, flex happening to the axle. So. This was designed mainly with modified in mind, but it can also be a good option for uh, spec classes, of course. But not only do we have a new solid axle design, we also have new wheel hubs, which look like these. Which they come with a little added uh, flange to them here, which it mounts into the axle like this. So this further reduces uh, wheel vibration and makes everything spin nice and true and makes it more efficient. So these are super light and super efficient and we're very happy with these. We're gonna put everything together here. First of all, we're gonna install the, the ride height adjusters in the rear, the axle holders which they look like this. Uh, you're probably familiar with them. They've been included in the X1221 kit as well. And also in previous X12 kits uh, many years ago, but they were reintroduced into the X1221 for the sake of simplicity, uh, efficiency, ease of use. Um, they are more forgiving for the axle bearings. The axle bearings last longer because of this uh, plastic material. So we're gonna install these for the initial setting with the 1.5 um, holder upside down. <clears throat> of course, you need to adjust the right head of the car according to your, your tire size. So that's why the kit comes with a range of um, bearing holders in, the, in steps of 0 0.5 millimeters so that you can fine tune the, the right head of the car in a quick and easy way when you're in the pits. And we install these axle bearings here into the holders. I like to add a bit of hoodie bearing oil to these bearings before running them. They come pre-oiled from the factory, but it's always good to add a bit of oil just to make sure that the bearings are lubricated for their first run. And then we're gonna install the spur gear onto the axle. So the EU kit comes with a 82 spur gear that is well suited for six and a half turn modified racing but also for 13.5 stock racing. The US kit comes with a 76 tooth spur gear which is best suited for 17.5 stock racing, but can also be used in 13.5 racing. 
So only X-ray gears will fit this solid axle, but we do offer all the necessary spur gear sizes, both for stock and modified racing. So you can purchase optional spur gear sizes to fine tune the rollout of your car. The spur gear installs to the solid axle with three screws, like this. And then we're gonna install the wheel hubs, the new redesigned wheel hubs. But before we do so, we're gonna have to install track width shims. And the track width shims are installed depending on the track width they wanna use, but also they have to be chosen depending on the offset of your wheels that you're using. So if you're using a wheel with a bigger offset, you'll have to use more shims here. But the kit initial setting is one millimeter per side. But then again, if you're using a wheel with more offsets, such as Jayco, uh, Ulti, for example, you need to use more shims here. But if you use a CRC rim or hot race, you need to use uh, less shims. So we install the axle here. Make sure that it's spinning freely. And we install the wheel hub on the other side. And I'm now gonna show you a little trick that I use to make sure that I have perfect end play to the axle. So I'm gonna use a feeler gauge, which is 0.15 millimeters. You can use 0.15 or 0.2. Normally that's the best gap. And I install this feeder gauge in between the hub and the bearing here to make sure that I have the perfect end play every time. And it's important to have a bit of end play here so that you, you don't have anything binding up here during cornering. And having a bit of play also protects the bearings in case of a crash, which is uh, very important for the durability of the bearings. And that's it, the solid axle is installed in the car. And that concludes the solid axle uh, build video.